Uh, g'day, I'm Mark Hoth and welcome to Swift Almanac. This is the second part of our How Does Facebook Do This uh, tutorial session that has been requested by Vivek Kumar Pal. So after a bit of a conversation, there are actually uh, three more things we need to do. Uh, the first one is selecting multiple images from an image picker and the second and third are displaying multiple photos and the, th and the third is uh, displaying tag lists. So I'm going to ignore the first one and just jump straight into the images uh, and I'll do a separate tutorial on a customized image view picker. So let's have a look. Okay, so uh, we've got our code from the uh, UI collection um, that we're using in the first tutorial, that first request tutorial. And since then, I have uh, completed what we're looking for. Uh, we've got a list of tags here. We've got our five pictures. We have a little bit of text up here, although it's in the wrong position. We might fix that along the way. And um, basically what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna type it out in front of you all. Um, I'm just gonna explain what I have done and why I have done it. So the first thing that we needed to do is we needed to make a change to our data structure. And you might recall that in our collection view controller at the top, we have just an array of uh, data, which is uh, this my data is all the information that's contained in one cell. And so for each cell, we've got the name um, on the plus moving to the view controller, we've got an age and a gender. And then we have an array of strings because we can have nil or we can have many and we've got now an array of images and uh, before we just had one image called the image but now it's called the images i've added tags and uh, basically the first image is also the um, uh, this display image here in the top left hand corner so if we uh, go to uh, my collection view controller, what has changed here? So essentially what I've done is I've created uh, all of these variables at the top. Now some of those could be constants, uh, however just for simplicity I have made them all variables and uh, I've hard coded these values in, well I've I haven't hard coded them in, but I've um, I've set them all up as uh, as variables so that you can uh, see uh, what's going on. So the image border is this distance between two pictures, but I also use it to um, place space between the top and the bottom. Uh, the screen width, well, that's uh, sort of self sufficient. Uh, the header height, so this, it's probably poorly named, but I'm calling this area the header, of course, that little item there is the header of the, uh, of the cell, but this, perhaps I should rename it title, but anyway, this is what it is. So it's the header height, it's the height from here to the bottom, and then we have our tags, and then we've got the tag height, and of course, this is a variable uh, height, because if there are no tags, this will be uh, a, a dead space. And then we have, I've got a, a cell height, um, which is the height of the entire cell. And then we have the main pick size, which is this space here. So that is the height and the width, uh, which is uh, obviously the same because it's a square. And then we have the two image size. So this is where there are two images. And so that size is the height and width to give that a square. And then we have the three image size, which is the height and width of where we have these three images. So uh, now these images, oh, these images are stored in assets and I've called them pick one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, now you can't see six because we're only displaying five and that says plus one, so we've got a, a little bug there which we'll fix. And uh, these are all pictures of me, except for this one, which is my daughter. Um, I'm sure she won't be too angry. And uh, so that's where all the pictures are located. 
And then uh, what I've done uh, to create these two data records, um, we just used to have Audrey 34 and true for gender. Um, but now we've added tags, which is an array of strings. And we've also added the images, which is an array of uh, images. And as you can see, we're calling a UI image named to pick up, pick one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we've got six images, which gives us our five. So uh, we had the two records and we sort them by name order, which we had before. Uh, there's nothing else really done there. Then we go down to uh, basically our, uh, the two things that need to change are our uh, self item at, which describes all the things about the uh, drawing of the cell. And secondly, our, uh, our collection view layout where we return the size of the cell. So perhaps I'll look at the size of the cell first so you can understand how this size is calculated. So we have our, uh, our variable cell height, um, which is equal to the header height, which is one of our variables at the top. It's, uh, it includes calc tag height, which is a function which calculates how many tags we've got and how many lines they take up. And so that basically tells us what this distance here is. And for that, we, uh, we pass the index path dot row, which tells us which cell we're dealing with. And then we add um, the image border, which is eight, which gives us this eight at the bottom. So uh, we have this incremental amount. Uh, we have this incremental amount cell index dot row. Look, we can even change this to make it just a little bit more. There you go. Um, and so then to calculate the height, we also need to know how many picks we have. So if we have zero picks, then we're just returning the cell height, no additional change there. And, and that space is all that will be returned. If we have greater than two uh, picks, that is we have three to five picks, then we're gonna increase the cell height by two times the image border, which is eight, that's one, two, plus the two image size, plus the three image size, which will give us the full size of the cell, and we will return that. And then otherwise, that means we don't have none, and we don't have three or more. We've got one or two, and so if we've got one or two, we're just adding um, the two image height and one image border to give us the height of the cell. So um, that covers everything that you need to know in terms of calculating the height of a cell and how we do it. And now let's get on to the meaty part and, uh, and figure out how we have displayed all this information. So we get our cell uh, from the cell for item at, and we wanna know, uh, we have an image counter. We also have, a count on how many tags we have. We have the top position of the tag, the left position of the tag, and the right position of the tag. Um, but before we get onto the tags, I suppose, let's talk about this image here, because we made uh, a small change. I've added some rounded corners to the image, so it looks a little prettier. It used to be square like this image is here. And if you want to know how to do that, well, simply we have uh, set the label text, Audrey's there, and then we have got the image view out of our array of images, it's the first item in the array, and then we issued these two commands, clip to bounds equals true, and we set the image view layer corner radius equal to a number, and we've selected eight. Now if you want that to be more of a round image, then uh, you can um, set the number higher and we'll run that just to show you. Okay, so now we've got uh, a, a completely round image. So depending on what you want, if you just want it to be um, slightly 
uh, slightly round or um, or just have rounded corners or if you want to be completely round then you can change the value of this number um, basically the width of this item is 45 so if you choose a number equal to half the width then um, that's basically going to round the entire um, thing so the corner radius is basically from this distance here how, how far do you want to come in uh, on each side and start the rotation so if you choose half then you're starting in the middle and you're doing the rotation um, from the, the, the middle top to the middle left, middle right, etc. If you do eight, uh, then you're coming in eight pixels and going down eight pixels, and then you're just doing a very small corner uh, in, in each of the four corners of the image. So hopefully that explains that. So if we look at our tags, um, it's a little bit confusing and you need to know a have a little bit of an understanding about what's going on with um, with labels and how they operate so uh, essentially what we want to do is we want to go through every label that we have and we want to place it correctly um, have a bit of a separator and uh, if we get too far along then we want to move down to the next level to see where we're at. So we have these um, these uh, variables here which are keeping a, a, a placeholders of where our top position is. So it's here for the first couple and then it drops down to here when we switch, change lanes and then we're keeping the left position and the right position. Now the problem is that we don't uh, we can't really calculate the uh, length of this text until we've created the label. So we create a label uh, which we just give default values to and we add that to the subview and then we create just two constraints um, which we're calling tag left and tag top and uh, then we add those constraints as we normally would and then what we do is with the label we set the font equal to the system font of size 12 so they're smaller and you can change that value if you so desire and um, we're changing the background color of the label to light gray so we can uh, we've got that you know that grade uh, look about the label um, and then again we're giving this this corner um, rounded look like tags normally have so we clip the bounds equals true and we set the corner radius equal to six and you can change that value and then you can see here the tag label dot text we set it to be the tag which we have got from uh, we're iterating through all the tags in our array for that cell and you'll see here that I've padded the front and the back with two spaces and that's to allow for the fact that there is rounding. So if we remove those two spaces, as you can see, there's not very much space on the left and the right without the spaces. So we'll just put those back uh, and pad out the text. Um, and then we issue this command for the label uh, to size to fit. And what that uh, will do is it will uh, resize the label so that the avail so that it's only as large as the available text and now we know um, what this left position is because it's set by the constraint but the right position has now been set so uh, we count the we count the um, we just <laughs> count the tags um, and then um, the right position is equal to the image border plus the tag labels uh, width. So the image, we're adding an extra um, border eight here, um, just so we can measure to this space where the next one would start. And then, whoop, and then what we wanna know is, is this right position over here? Is it off the screen? Because it's off the screen, um, we wanna jump down to the next level and draw it down here. Um, otherwise, if uh, if we don't want to, if we don't, uh, if we're not off the screen, then all we want to do is we want to increment increment the left position equal to uh, this spot here, which is for this tag labels value plus the image border, so that the next iteration through this loop 
is going to start at this position. So uh, basically, if we don't have this code here, then everything's just going to go flying off the um, edge of the screen and we won't uh, see anything. So what we want to know is uh, what do we do if the right position is going to be off the screen. So uh, what we do know is we're not going to draw it in that position. So what we want to do is we've got our tag left and our tag top, and we want to set, set those um, to false. They're no longer active. We're no longer going to use those two constraints. And in fact, by setting is active to false, you're actually destroying those constraints. Then what we want to do is we want to set the left tag position back to uh, the image border. So that's eight, eight pixels in because we've set image border equal to eight. And the tag top position is going to be equal to the image border, another eight down here, plus the tag label frame height. So we're going to drop down one of these label heights plus a border, which will put us in this new position. So we're dropping from this and click from this point here down to this point here. And then what we want to do is we want to do the tag right position, which is going to be set to two image borders, one, two, and the, uh, the width of the tag label. Then once we've got the new position, we want to create uh, a, left, a tag left new constraint and a tag top new constraint, and we want to uh, add those constraints and that will uh, redraw these or, or this particular tag in the correct position. And then next time we're iterating through the loop, um, we've already changed uh, top left, so it's still going to be down here and uh, top right. Now, the only problem with this code is that if you have a particularly long tag that's going to go, that is longer than a um, that, that are a whole line, so it's, well, on this screen, 375 pixels wide, um, then you're going to have problems because uh, it's, uh, it's only going to draw, well, it's going to move it down and then it's going to draw it off the screen because it only makes this check once. And there's no, uh, for our tags, it doesn't do multi-lines. Okay, so that's how the tags work. Um, and the thing to remember here is that, um, or the trick to, to know is that we've only used two constraints, left and top, and we haven't supplied height and width, and that's because um, for labels, the operating system knows to, if we call this size to fit, it knows, or auto layout knows, to um, constrain the label uh, to the height and width of the text, which you can calculate once you've set what the text is and what the font and font size are. Um, so we've deliberately not uh, added the tag height and width because they're automatically calculated. Okay, so going down to our photo list, um, again, we are iterating through every image in our the images based on, uh, based on, uh, the cell that we're talking about. And the first thing we do is check to make sure that it's not empty. So if it is empty, um, we just return the cell and nothing happens. Um, but if it isn't empty, i.e. we have images, then we want to go through every image. So if the image count is less than five, um, then uh, what, and, and we're counting every image as we go through, so it's going to start where is it? Image count equals zero. Let's move it down here. Okay, so we've got our image count and it's uh, starting at zero. And so if our images are less than five, we uh, create an, uh, uh, an image view. And we give it a default size, doesn't matter what it is. We add that sub view and then we set scale to fill and uh, we call this set image rectangle, um, which takes <laughs> the cell that we're dealing with, the image count, so we know which image we're dealing with, and 
the image view that we're creating. And basically what set image rect does is it says it switches on the count and it sets the constraints based on which of the up to five situations uh, we're in. So if we're zero, this is the constraint that we need. Uh, if it's the first one, it's this one, second one, third one, and fourth one. Now, um, this is just a, an example of how to do five. Um, it is not a complete solution to the Facebook problem because if you have one image, then you're going to take up the entire um, space. And in with this code, it's going to just simply um, set it equal to, uh, well, whatever the calculation is, screen width minus um, border. Um, so say this is 375 minus a border of eight, uh, that would give us 367, and then it would halve that, would give us 183.5. So this is gonna be 183.5 by 183.5 in all cases. Um, but uh, regardless, this is how you would calculate uh, it for five or more. And if we look at these constraints, the left position is uh, simply, um, you take the uh, image view that will, was passed and uh, we want to set dot left uh, relative to the cell, which has also been passed uh, to the cells dot left. And we're going to set that equal to zero. And as you can see, it's flush against the zero. For the top, again, we set the image view dot top equal to the cell. And the attribute now, this is why we have these uh, variables header height plus tag height um, plus image border. Um, so those are, um, and so we got a little image border there, which gives us the height. And then the width and the height are equal to two image size, um, which was one of, the, one of the things we calculated at the, uh, in the view to load. Two image size, which is equal to the screen width minus the image border, which is this eight, divided by two, and the three image size, which is the screen width uh, minus two image borders, divide that whole thing by three. So, uh, and, then, and then basically, we just do the same in the calculations of the, um, the first position here. The, the left-hand part is two image size, which is here, plus a border, that's where we're starting, and the top is the same as above header height plus tag height plus image border, and then it's height and width is two images sizes, and then two, three, and four is basically a little lower down, um, zero to the start, then move across by a third, move across by two thirds, and uh, that's what these sets of constraints do. So um, that gives us uh, the five positions here, and it resizes the images to the available size. If the image count equals five, then in addition, uh, we've, that means we've, uh, it, it, yes, if, if, well, if the image count equals five, that means we've got to a sixth image because we start from zero. And then we want to uh, draw this label uh, and it's going to be image count minus five. Um, so um, what we do is we create another label um, and we're giving it, uh, or what I've done is I've, <laughs> I've just given a width of three image size by three image size. So the label is exactly the same size as the image. And then I set the left constraint equal to two times three image size plus uh, three image size, well, plus label that width of two, whatever. Um, and, and and the top equal to a similar similar calculation. Um, we set those constraints, and then the text is simply plus, and then uh, the array of images dot count. So how many images do we have? Subtract it by five. When I compile it, it'll say plus one. Um, we set the text color to white. We align the text, and then we set the font to be um, the bold system font of size 16, so it's quite large. Um, and then we increment the image count. 
And basically that means that when we have more images, we're still going to iterate through this uh, loop. We could do a break or something like that. Um, but in any event, uh, nothing's going to get processed. So it's we're going to save like, I don't know, not, not very many, uh, not very many uh, CPU processes um, by putting a break in there. So what we really want to do is fix this calculation, which really should be, um, I want to move to the right by half a three image size plus three image size divide two. Yes, I'm wondering why. Well, maybe if we want to move halfway across. Let's take that one away and the top. Uh, let's take that one away. Let's see if that makes a big difference. And there you go. We are in the correct location. Only it's difficult to read. I did make it bold, so I'm not quite sure why. Um, but in any event, that is uh, the solution to Vivex code, with the exception that uh, there's a, a few more um, constraints that need to be calculated. Now, what I will go through is this this tag, this calculate tag height, um, just to show you what I've done. And uh, essentially, this code here, which returns the height. Um, is exactly the code uh, here as it's going through this tag loop. Um, the only difference is that I uh, I don't need to set any um, any uh, well I create the label but I don't add the subview and so uh, it's never displayed on the screen. And because it's not displayed on the screen, I don't need to worry about the constraints. It resizes automatically with the size to fit command. That allows us to calculate the width just like it does above and sets all these values and calculates the height. Um, there's probably a nice easy way of uh, recalculating this and uh, this at the in, in some uh, refactored code, but uh, you get the general idea. Um, hopefully that answers uh, all of Vivek's questions. And I've uh, uploaded all this code to uh, GitHub and the URL is on the screen now. So there it is. That's how you can dynamically resize your cells uh, by adding views and objects uh, programmatically within the code. And you should be able to see why that's better in code than uh, than by using a storyboard. Uh, if you've got any questions about the tutorial, then please leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at Swift Almanac. Please subscribe to the channel, it's free, and check out our website at www.swiftalmanac.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers.